Jacqueline Duran, costume designer for Small Axe, specifically uh, for the whole anthology series and Lovers Rock uh, as well. Is, is, uh, the anthology program is based on the real life experiences of London's West Indian community and is set between 1969 and 1982. Uh, Jacqueline, Steve McQueen has talked a lot about how personal these collections of films are to him, especially Lovers Rock. I guess, can you talk a little about what your initial conversations were with him regarding the costumes for the whole series, but especially that episode? Um, I should just be clear about that. I I did um, start off with the idea of doing the whole series, but I didn't do it. I just did two specific episodes, which were Lovers Rock, and I think it ended up being called Alex Wheatle. And the other, there were two other costume designers who did the other four. So I should probably just talk to the two that I did, really. I mean, but in in a sense, it was the brief was the same to for the whole series. Um, it's not something, believe it or not, that we've that we've really tackled very much on British television, and so it was a very new thing to be doing, and it was it was very personal to Steve and to many other people who'd contributed their stories to the to the series. So it very much felt that you were entrusted with something significant and important, and something that you needed really to treat with a great deal of care um, on a it was it was people's personal stories it wasn't things in the public domain and it was not something that had been told before so i really felt the weight of and the responsibility of getting it to as accurate to portray it as accurately as possible um that really was the was the brief was to do justice to this world which we haven't really um looked into on television before in the UK. So that was that was the sort of setting for the whole thing. And then for me, I had the great opportunity of having two different episodes. So Lovers Rock is not someone's personal story. And it was more of a of a poetic take on a party and a segment of life which wasn't about a particular issue, but it was about life. And it had a kind of beautiful poetic quality and you know Steve said that there was an element to you know of a butterfly about the lead um, character so there were all those things to bring into it so I had the possibility of, of taking that approach and then the Alex Weasel story it was completely the opposite because I went to meet him and I talked to him and I read his books and I and I looked at there's a lot of photographic reference of Brixton in that period so I looked at tons of reference and tried to work out a way of telling the story. It was problematic because actually there was a time problem in the sense that it was only an hour long, but we had to cover years and years of time. So it kind of crashed a little bit because you wanted to show the passage of time, but you didn't have time to keep changing costumes. So that was a little bit problematic. But it was it was great to have the opportunity to do the two different approaches in my two episodes. At the risk of asking you to pick a favorite, or uh, <laughs> but is there an approach you prefer? I guess like you like, uh, or are there are elements of each. I'm sure that you enjoy. But starting creating something like you said, like Lovers Rock, is not necessarily based on any real person. So you're maybe a little more freedom. Now, Alex Lido, you don't have you know it's more it's obviously more fact based. So you have to you know rely on you know, pre-existing, pre-existing imagery and like obviously a real person. So I guess for you, is there a, you know, which do you prefer, which is, which presents more challenging, which, or challenges? Um, I don't think either really, I don't think they're, they're different. I don't think they're more, either is more of a challenge, but it's just great to have the opportunity to do both because you, you want to dig into the reference and it, you're sort of approaching it differently it makes you approach the reference differently. So then you're trying, you know, when you're trying to tell someone's exact story, you need to kind of be tied into dates and specifics and everything else. And it's also to do with the fact that I had the problem of the passage of time in an hour with Alex Wheatle and I didn't, and Lover's Rock was an evening. So in that respect, it was great because I didn't have to worry about any of that. I just could just go for this thing. And, and I think that, what I enjoyed about Lovers Rock was was discovering and uncovering the women's fashion style for that party, but in which was the Lovers Rock style as we know it. But it's not generally um, represented as a party style. It, 
when when people do um, parties in that period, they tend to go for a sort of sound system look, which is something more familiar. But the kind of aspirational, secretarial, very proper style of dressing that the, that women had for this particular scene was um, was really great to reproduce because it wasn't something we'd seen before. Uh, you, I want to speaking of lovers rocking. I guess can you talk a little about like you mentioned that like I, it, I, one of the things I really appreciate about like watching it is that you're right. It's like showing showcasing a style and like a, an era that when you see that era in film and TV, uh, it doesn't look like that, right? There's like a very you know like I think yeah. we've like kind of sanded down the '80s. You know that takes place like I think in 1980. Lovers rock into like a very generic yeah. like '80s look or like whatever. And then even a London <laughs> you know '80s look like looking like whatever. So. I guess for this, like, were you, how much of this were you creating versus how much of this were you sourcing from like, uh, like, you know, thrift shops or whatever? How did you go about like building that look? It was all, no, the thing is as well, the other thing to, to realize about Lovers Rock is that we shot it in 10 days and we had two weeks prep. So it was a tiny, tiny production. So we, so everything was bought apart from the costumes for the main girls. Oh, and, and Michael Ward's character, I forgot his name, Franklin, um, because they needed duplicates just because, but everything else was um, purchased. And what I think is really fantastic about Lover's Rock, and I think it touches on something that Jennifer was saying, but I couldn't hear her exactly, is that there was no, there was not a very great distinction between the crowd per se and the actors. And I think when you watch it, that's one of the most amazing things is that Steve's managed to get this environment, which is just a really holistic thing <laughs> because there is no differentiation between them really. The crowd are absolutely amazing. And and I and we, you know, we spent the same amount of time dressing the crowd as we did the principals, apart from obviously the three that needed clothes making. Yeah, that is amazing. It, it, that's when, it, like, you're right. It just immerses you in the world. Like, you just are like, this feels like, yeah, like, it's just like, everybody looks great. And, like, again, because as an audience member, you're maybe not familiar with the actors or, like, you know, it's not yeah. like, you know, uh, it, you're kind of like, it could be anybody who is the star of the, yeah, this show, exactly. right? And, like, that's like, yeah, I, th I found that really uh, lovely. Well. I don't think. I think that's one of the great things about that episode is you can't really tell the difference. But there's, there is no difference. It's a totally enmeshed environment, and um, and it was it was great for that. It was a great experience. So you mentioned like obviously the mission statement and talking to Steve about uh, these pro these two. I guess like what was it like once you got that and got those orders, got those like you know uh, marching orders or whatever you want to call them, and then went ahead and you know did the work. I guess what was he like as a collaborator? I know he's like such a obviously such an incredible director and like, you know, like, I guess what, what was your collaboration with him after getting, you know, like the idea of like his, his thoughts on it? He loves, he loves you to contribute to, to the, the telling of the story and the making of the film. So he, he loves you to come up with ideas and to show him different options and to just throw things out there. It, it, it's a bit like the lover's rock look, you know, it wasn't a done deal at the beginning that we were going to go down this path because, you know, in some ways it's a heightened reality. You know, things wouldn't have been purely one look in the way that we chose to represent it, but it just, it was, you know, it was something that we discussed looking at the reference and we just went for it. But he, he's a very, um, he's a great collaborator. And he's very interested in in seeing you know everyone's contribution. At, at the risk of asking again to pick a, a favorite, is there a costume in Lovers Rock like what, one of the looks that you specifically were like excited to recreate or like you know like to to showcase? There was actually, but it yeah, it, there was there is really a favorite costume of mine, but it's um, it's not what everyone would want me to say, but it's the girlfriend of the doorman. And I spent a lot of time fitting her because I wanted to have this kind of specific idea of a Rasta girlfriend going to the party and how she would be in relation to the other girls at the party and how she would be in relation to her boyfriend and all these things. And I was really pleased with how she ended up looking. So yeah, I guess that's one of my favorite costumes. It's good, there you go. Uh, <laughs> but she, no one probably noticed her, but she, she, I, I enjoyed it myself. So there we go. That's great. Uh, Jacqueline Duran, Small Axe, Lovers Rock, and Alex Weedle. Thank you so much, and stay tuned. We'll talk to you in a little bit.